think the interesting part of being on the second panel is it's all you already had a lot of context to what's happening. I think you joined a little late, but you did hear the majority of what was being discussed. I think all these problems, developer plus corporate wellness, are very similar. You're dealing with humans. At the end of the day, it's people that you're dealing with, you're trying to solve the problem. Now, I, I, you know, this particular panel, I would like to discuss more about how are progressive developers looking at their communities. You know, you guys are leading, you, you, you're setting standards for the industry, right? As, you know, as those people, as Raheja, you're setting benchmarks for people in the industry, the smaller developers to see how you can do this better. If I go back probably two decades and, you know, and look at how gyms work in, in, in societies, they were, they were not even, you couldn't even qualify in a common gym, but they were just, they were just put there as a piece of cake. And from there to now, people spending so much money, effort, and progressive developers talking to people like, say, above it and saying that, you know what, I've identified there is a problem. And I think 50% of the battle is won when you know that there is a problem. Half the people don't want to acknowledge that there is a problem. They want to say that, I know. I think the progressive developers have, have realized that leave the job to the experts and are also willing to spend more money. Yes, there is an ROI. Obviously, that's the, that's the most important. Every square foot counts. And, and with the you know, kind of price here for real estate in Mumbai, there's not a chance you're going to have something which does not have an ROI because you paid for it. But keeping those constraints in mind as developers, you know, would like to understand how you take this decision and what impacts that decision of yours to say that, OK, this is where the trends are going. Do you do any research around it? Is it a gut feel? <coughs> is it a trend that you see? Because all of you have done multiple large projects. So I'll, I'll jump for, first at you on this one. Because I think uh, I think as a, as a group, you've started doing some things which are, again, very innovative. And what made you do it? And where do you think this is going to go for your group uh, incorporating corporate wellness, fitness as a, for, the, for the community <coughs> at large? Thank you. Um, uh, we definitely feel that um, we are doing a, I would say, a mix of projects, be it affordable, premium, mid-luxury, and even super premium. And uh, across these projects, we would say we always try to rank fitness and health wellness as one of the topmost amenities being provided to our customers. Although we see when customers tend to buy a flat or choose a project to buy for, they don't tend to look at sizes of the gymnasium, number of squash courts, tennis courts, or outdoor space. They tend to look at more of open spaces or density. But end of the day, when they get possession and the customers realize how large the fitness spaces are, how <coughs> their um, grandparents or children or they themselves can enjoy the, um, the gymnasiums, the amenities, the swimming pools, it really makes an impact to them and future gen generations of theirs as well who plan to stay in the premises. We overall are working with um, uh, with Hotfoot and Elysium for two three of our projects and in that we have um, uh, um, tried to give them a lot of liberty in terms of planning the space to right. a, do a capacity mapping the way Pavit mentioned about in the last interaction and those projects should be reaching possession in a couple of eight to nine months from now on. So we expect the residents to be extremely pleased with what they're getting, although we unfortunately see a very low trend of not more than 2 to 3 percent of customers actually use the gymnasiums or outdoor amenities. But by creating various innovations, we want to increase that number rapidly, starting with say a 5 percent, 8 percent, and then gradually ramp up to UK standards. Yes. Thanks, Anjali. With that question for you on, you hit the market. Right. Now, I don't want to sound condescending here, but is it just a marketing given that people look at fitness today as developers? Or do you think that now people are actually looking at fitness being a real issue to be solved? Design was the main focus earlier, where you know 
you engage with foreign architects, you got them on board. Today we are engaging with consultants like Pavel to come on board, maybe five years ahead of the project. We are, so we moved in that respect. We are looking at it as not just a marketing gimmick, but truly giving an experiential lifestyle to each of our customers across age groups. Pavel mentioned in his talk that it's about engaging. So we want to engage all age groups, not only a community living, but a feel of being holistic about fitness, about health, about giving them what is there globally available to them. That's where we come from. So is it, so would it be fair to say that it's a conscious call that today the, the I mean, rate are up very large developers and you obviously will set trends for the entire industry. Now, would it be fair to say that it's a conscious decision that you're taking that there is there is this one particular aspect of of people who stay in the apartments that I give, or the corporate leases that I do, or the ID parks that I make, that they use the gyms a lot more. Is that a, is that a decision that has been taken at like a board level, or is it still you know uh, I don't know how to say this, but I see a lot of times you know when you when a project comes in, the brochure looks like absolute kick ass with an amazing gym on that. And then you look at the gym that's actually coming, and then you look at this. Obviously, Rera has changed that for a few people, but you know, when a, a treadmill is a treadmill is a treadmill, people look at it. And we were discussing it that you know when you were standing there. But do you see now the amount of time and money that was spent back in the day to get foreign architects in? 